Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Batman the Telltale Series. Well, last time you remember, we had our first encounter with Catwoman, recovered some hard drive she was trying to steal, and had an encounter with Carmine Falcone, the big crime boss of Gotham City, who showed up uninvited to a fundraising party we were throwing for Harvey Dent. I tried and failed to piss off some rich old folks who were talking about how important it is that old money families stick together. And we let Vicki Vale, a reporter, uh, go ahead and stick around, even though she wasn't supposed to be there either. So, that concluded Chapter 1. Let's now start Chapter 2. Some time to do the things you never had. I wasn't humming, Toto. I was being dark and broody and gothic like it's the night. Me. Chapter 2 of Episode 1. Another brutal week in Gotham, folks. A string of home invasions rippled through the city's already crime-infested East End. Apparently, the bandits are using stolen GCPD battery rams to force their way in. With breaking and entry incidents up 40% over last year. Remember to keep those front doors locked tonight. We have breaking news tonight. Five criminals are in custody this evening after a break-in at City Hall. But thanks to the efforts of the Batman, the stolen items were returned. Not all of them. Let's see what she was really after. Allegations that Dent may have actually been involved in the break-in. Talk about dirty politics. Does Hill's campaign really think these accusations hold any water with the voters? Yeah, I got the Jack Ryder news report there in the background. And uh, we will get news reports as the game progresses and newspaper clippings. But let's go ahead and check out the Codex first. Oh, and here we have Vesper Fairchild, who you might remember as the reporter from Batman the Animated Series. And Jack Ryder is, of course, the reporter who becomes the vigilante called the Creeper. I think that's enough of me watching Two TV and you watching me watching Arkham TV. Asylum, bringing the total number of escapees from the half prison, half mental hospital to 15 this year. Unfortunately, there's no way to turn it off so that we can look at the other things in peace, like... Some would say inhumane conditions at the aging asylum. The latest... So we read the latest news and there's a story about DA pressuring the mayor to decry vigilanteism. Harvey being firmly anti-Batman at the moment. Uh, Jim Gordon, who is currently a lieutenant, being tapped to lead a special task force. And there's the story we mentioned last time about the Wayne Enterprises funding a new Arkham Asylum. Some of which have been occupied by families for decades. 
So if you come home and we have the codex, street, which lets us look at profiles of different characters and how our relationships are changing mm -hmm. with them and as the game progresses. So we've got, the you know, and we also keep track of who's alive and who's dead because that, in theory, can change. Well, if they die, not nobody coming back from the dead. So, get profiles for my parents, Alfred, Harvey, and notes that Harvey is basically a good guy, but he's way too easily swayed by the power. You know, he cozy at the Falcone way too quickly. Mayor Hill, he's really corrupt. Cat Burglar, we have no name for yet. And Oswald Cobblepot, a.k.a. Penguin. Arms dealing, illegal boxing matches, receiving his own property. Childhood friend, but he's almost a stranger to me now. Just like me, his family fell apart here in Gotham. He went off to boarding school in England, and there are perhaps diverged. He seems to have fallen into a crime. The last decade has given him a lengthy rap sheet, a strange nickname, the Penguin. What happened to you, Oz? And he was there at our party last night. A uh, note about James Gordon. Notes that he has a daughter named Barbara. I'm Harvey Dent, and I approve this message. So lots of little nods here. Vicky Vale, and yeah, the news finally shut Talk off. Darn it! Really think these it was repeating. I thought it shut off eventually, but anyway, uh, ambitious reporter. Been with the paper for a while. Has resources others would kill for. Might hear about more of what's going on Gotham than I do. Carmine Falcone, total crook. And Gotham City, wretched hive of scum and villainy, population 10 million. And Arkham Asylum, Wayne Enterprises, so on and so forth. And I thought hitting that would let me escape out, but it took me to the main menu. Okay, there we go. Lagged out a moment. Okay, so that's what we can get through the back computer. Nearly fell off a building for this. And lies day drive at the back of here, but we can also take a look at our bat gadgets. Random stabbings are the latest headache for the riders of Gotham's spare grapple. Can't believe I let her take that. Well, you didn't really let her take it. Deliver but... a jolt or knock out electricity in the area. I suppose that cat woman would have preferred the latter. The newest addition can program it to reveal trace elements in a confined space. Yep, bat drone. Well, the test run at the mayor's office was a success. I should see if I can refine the edge. Could be sharper. Now, mess with that later. The latest, 44-year-old twin brother and sister, Leon and Valerie Muldoon, should be considered to be a risk of battle. Police are asking that you do not approach and call police immediately. You couldn't just buy a $50 office chair at Office Depot. No, we gotta have the dramatically raising from the floor model. Wayne Manor has seven bedrooms, two kitchens, a library, a gymnasium, a basketball court, and a movie theater. And yet I always find you here, in a dark, damp cave. Your mom's in a dark, of a damp computer. cave. Yeah, well, this is the only room that really matters. Well, then you won't mind if I skip cleaning the rest. The dusting is murder. Did you find out what that, um, cat woman tried to steal? Well, in the process. What are we looking at? Let me try a different angle. This is a map of the east side shoreline. But it could mean any number of things. Money, weapons, drugs, everything flows through that port. Maybe it's where Mayor Hill picks up his dry cleaning. Hmm. K 
can't make sense of it yet. There's still plenty of files to decrypt. And in the meantime, I saved you what I could. Thanks, so. Al. Yeah, the same couldn't be said for the bar. I had to literally pry Mrs. Zeller back away. But you'll be pleased to hear everyone has left, including Mr. Falcone. I would have been tempted to be far less polite. I'd recommend leaving the fist fights to your alter ego. Bloodstains are much harder to remove from a tuxedo. It was a keep your enemies closer situation. Hopefully not close enough to stab you in the back. For the record, your father despised men like Falcone, thought they ruined Gotham's stellar reputation. Back when it still had one? It can again. When did it ever have one? Though people like this cat woman aren't helping. Is she new to town? I've never seen her before. Hopefully she's just a tourist. No, I already checked the codex. Not much to find, apparently. A few burglaries, break-ins. Seems to lay pretty low. You could learn a thing or two from her. You can't step outside without it ending up in the news lately. As Bruce or Batman. I stay out of sight when I need to. Define need to. Uh, whenever Harvey calls. The guy's exhausting. Well, after the press conference tomorrow, I'll mark your calendar as exhausted then. The media isn't good for anyone's health. I don't mean to beat a dead argument, but... No one's gonna figure it out now. Trust me. Miss Vale noticed your injuries, so did Mr. Dent. If they put it together with the incident at the mayor's office, it would undo all the long nights and close calls we've endured to get here. You're in the spotlight more than ever. You have to be careful. I've had to cover from mysterious injuries before. You've been lucky. Or I'm just a really good liar. A necessary evil in your line of work, I suppose. Though I hope you change careers someday. Ah, <sighs> old men worry, that's all. It's our gift and our curse. One more worry for the list. I thought I saw Oz. It's been, what, 20 years? Last time I saw him, we were in grade school. Indeed. You two were thick as thieves. Oswald, however, took that role more literally than you. Dishonorable discharge, illegal boxing matches, arms dealing, prison stents? That's a criminal grand slam, if I'm using the expression correctly. Unfortunately, you are. Oswald claimed he only wanted to catch up, but his behavior following his family's collapse is troubling. Why he's returning now, I haven't the faintest idea. You think he's looking for a handout? He would have come to the right person. No, because I'm... Because you're generous. A little too much sometimes, with your wealth, your time, and even your well-being. Even though you and young Master Cobblepot used to be close, I'd advise you to be cautious. But I know you can't abandon a good mystery until it's solved. I'll be careful, Alfred. When you see what's become of his park, I think you will. That wasn't ominous at all. Yeah, Cobblepot Park. 6.06 a.m. Homeless person warming themselves over openly visible trash fire. Tons of graffiti. Where Is the sign you, still up? Alright, well, look at graffiti. He who reads these words of wit, and, oh, that's immature even for Gotham. Okay, look at recent newspaper. And yeah, reflection of last night. <coughs> Got the picture of us shaking hands with Falcone. And nothing else to click around here, so move on in.
give change or examine the homeless person. Oh, let's just examine. Thank you, sir. Yeah, like Bruce Wayne carries change on him. Yeah, so let's look at the burning barrel. I say I will stand here in my designer shirt and pants and blend in with these ruffians. <sighs> Running late to meet you by the statue. There's the statue, but no eyes. Well, he did just send the message. Okay, so look at shopping cart. Yeah, that's a shopping cart, all right. And there's another one. Smoking man. Yeah, let's actually look at the graffiti first before we go bother the random smoking man who's hanging around the park at 6 in the morning, smoking and not intending to do anything bad whatsoever to a hapless schmuck who's dressed way too nice for this part of town. It isn't what it used to be. Oh, mercy, mercy me. Oh, things ain't what they used to be. Oh, no. I wonder if I should grow mutton chops like that. Watch Wallet Cash. But this goes through you. Who wears watches you anymore? Him, Seriously. Man. The hell are you waiting for? Go ahead. Try and take it. The hell do you say? End him! Gentlemen! Oz. Keep walking, all right? This don't concern you, twerp! You see, that's where you're mistaken. My old mate and I have some catching up to do. And you're ah. in the moment! Come here! Think that'll do? This used to be a nice place. No lives like you don't belong. This is my park. Mine. You hear that? Oh, hey, Bruce. You've got a little, uh... Yeah, hey, good as new. Woo, that was the right little scrap, eh? Nothing kickstarts the system like a dash of adrenaline, eh? Besides, someone needed to deal with the rubber situation here. Well, thanks for the backup. I yanked you away from your bloody ivory tower, Bruce. Least I can do is make sure you don't get shanked. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. Yeah, it's been, what, two decades? And you know what? I haven't been mugged once that entire time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that wasn't why I brought you here, mate. Right now, I am trying to recognize the little Bruce I used to run around this place with. Back when it wasn't, you know, like this. This park used to mean something. A place that was safe for kids, for families. People came from all over to visit. Oh, Mom and Dad, they put so much work in here. Well, those were better days. That they were. Yeah. Thought we'd grow up to be kings, I did. Both of us. <sighs> this city chews right through people. <sighs> Mum committed to Arkham. Dad ended it yourself, he did. My family's fortune. There's nothing left, Bruce. I know. Alfred told me. <sighs> it's funny, huh? Same place that ground my family to dust. Gave you the good life. Used to run in the same circles we did. 
hobnob and parties, round the world vacations, unlimited potential. My parents are gone too, Oz. I know, Bruce, I know. I'm sorry for it. But I have my own funerals to attend. Good to know you haven't changed, Bruce. You still care about something more than just yourself. Although, I was surprised to see Carmine Falcone at your party last night. Made himself right at home. That oily... Oh, wish I could have punched that grin into the back of his throat. Falcone was an uninvited guest. That's it. I never want to see his face again. On that, we can agree in earnest. Falcone made a stack of cash and corpses a mile high, ruining families like mine. All he needs is a little push. And... It'd be a treat to watch him at pavement. Sorry, mate. This reunion got a lot more grim than I planned. Things are gonna be on the upswing soon, no? A revolution is knocking on Gotham's door. And I'm here to let it in. Which brings me to you, Bruce. You see, you throw a rock in any direction, you break a window that Wayne Enterprises owns. As the rich and powerful go, oh, you top Gotham's list. But when my revolution starts, we're gonna smash windows and cross off names all the way down. Like I said, it's not gonna be pretty. It's gonna be beautiful. I'm not your enemy, Oz. That remains to be seen, don't it? I've got great affection for you, Bruce. I really do. Which is why I'm warning you. When this whole thing starts, make sure you're on the right side. Hey, no problem. Down with the 1%. Power to the people. Viva la France. Good seeing you, Bruce, but I got some rocks to collect. Cheers. And quick note here, this is one of the bits of the game where no matter how sympathetic you are to Oz, no matter how much you might want to join the crusade he's getting ready to start, uh, you won't be able to. Which is one of the more frustrating aspects of the Telltale games, in my opinion, is that they're all about choices, so they say, and how your choices affect the game, but really, most of the time... All you do is change the dialogue. Now, there are some bits that you can change the story and how things go and where things wind up. And I'll probably note that at the end because I'd like to keep this a surprise and keep you all guessing. But, uh, spoiler alert, you cannot join Penguin in his glorious, you know, revolution against the fat cats running Gotham. For obvious reasons. And text message again. Press conference new hospital starts soon. Car waiting on south side of the park. Over here, right here. This way. Bruce, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Mr. Dent. Hey, Bruce, you mind if we swap cars? I mean, mine isn't fast and the paint's rusting off, but boy, does she have charm. <laughs> Let's keep up the we comedy act. We're all out here to discuss cars, honestly. Now, we're here about Arkham Asylum. Ever since it opened its doors, Arkham has been a breeding ground for the criminally insane. Need to talk. Its methods for rehabilitation, crude. Its security, lacking. And worse still, those who do get out, or God forbid escape, are even more dangerous than before they went in. Arkham Asylum is a cancer on Gotham. <clears throat> but today, 
with a sizable contribution from this man here. I wasn't playing Angry Birds. We break ground on a state-of-the-art mental health care facility. One that will improve the well-being of Gotham and its citizens for years to come. Now, Mr. Wayne has a few words he'd like to say. Bruce? Tungsten. Anyway, not that word. I'm here today because I want to heal Gotham. To stop the culture of crime that's running our streets. <sighs> you know, when I was uh, nine years old, my parents took me to see a movie about a hero in a mask. It was a hero who stood up to oppression and defended the people from injustice, no matter the cost. That night, my parents paid the ultimate cost defending me from a man. Here's Vicky. Who needed the kind of help this new facility will provide. With this facility and our next mayor, we create a new face for Gotham. Irony. Today, on the anniversary of that fateful night, we dedicate this facility to Thomas and Martha Wayne and usher in a new era of healing for Gotham. I'm, uh... Sure, you all have plenty of questions about the new hospital, so let's open it up. Right here, please. You first, Miss Vale. Thank you. With the opening of this new hospital, what does this mean for Arkham Asylum? What happens to the old building? I say we leave the asylum standing as a reminder that we can do better. This time, we won't fail those who need us most. Are we all right, who's up next? Uh, you there. Mr. Wayne, Julia Remark of the Tribune. My sources say you welcomed alleged mob boss Carmine Falcone into your home. You even shook his hand. Falcone is no friend, it's a free country. I don't make friends with gangsters. He was an unwelcome guest. That's all. Next question, please. Please keep your questions on topic, people. We're here about the hospital, remember? Urgent GCPD but Mr. is here. Wayne, this morning the Globe received evidence of an offshore bank account managed by Carmine Falcone and your father, Thomas Wayne. What exactly are you implying? Transactions connected to organized crime going back years and continuing to this day. The paper trail ties your family directly to the mob. Care to comment? Doubt your evidence. Let's get angry. How dare you? I just finished telling you about my parents' murder, and you accuse them of being, what, criminals? Have some decency. Mr. Wayne, oh, Mr. Mr. Wayne, is all your money dirty? Is the Wayne family legacy built on lies? Did you know about this, Bruce? How long has your family been dealing with... Are you the father, Mr. Wayne? Could the allegations be true? What are you telling us? Does the mob sign Wayne Enterprises' paychecks? My parents were entrepreneurs, philanthropists, not common criminals. It's absurd. Mr. Wayne, Mr. Wayne! How long has your family been dealing with Falcone? Could the allegations be true? Did you know about this, Bruce? What are you telling us? I'm sorry about this, Bruce. I don't know where the hell it's coming from. Damage control is my territory. We'll talk later. Everyone, everyone, please settle down. I'll be fielding your questions from here on out. Please, let's try to keep this civilized. Bruce, I've been trying to reach you. The police are inside the manor. Well, that's going to get all kinds of complicated. Hey, hey, careful! Put it back. I'm afraid we can, Mr. Wayne. Says who? This warrant. It's not personal. I had the boys turn the lights off, keep a low profile. I'm sorry, are you arresting me? Not unless I'm forced to. We're only collecting evidence today. I didn't do anything. That's what we're here to find out. Alfred, keep an eye on them. Make sure they only take what they have to. Of course, sir. I meant what I said about not personal. We only want files related to Wayne Enterprises. 
The warrant covers your place, pardon me, places of residence. Who authorized this? I know you and the DA are buddy-buddy, but this one came from the top. It's a valid warrant. I gotta serve it. Mayor Hill signed off on this himself. As long as he's mayor, he calls the shots. Well, Hill has a history of making his opposition... disappear. Rumors and allegations, Mr. Wayne, that's all. But if they become fact, I'll handcuff him myself, same as any other crook. I don't know how your neck ended up on Mayor Hill's shopping block, but here we are. Hill knows if I go down, Harvey's campaign goes down too. That'd be a real shame. Mr. Dent's the only DA I ever trusted to make a conviction stick. As mayor, I think he can finally turn things around for us. For all our sakes, I pray you've got nothing to hide. Yeah, we don't really have any options for upsetting Jim Gordon here. Symbolism! Bruce, stay back! Take whatever you want! You... you don't have to do this. And the end. Bruce. In case you're about those ticket stubs from earlier. There you go. Bruce? I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but... Uh, it's... It's not a problem, really. Ah, oh, Bruce. First the mayor's office, now Wayne Manor. <laughs> Gotham continues its streak of break-ins. Yeah, really going for the record, huh? Listen, Bruce. A scandal surrounding a beloved family like yours captures the public's attention. I can help you get the right kind of attention. Through my connections at the Gazette, I have all kinds of access. I can dig up whatever you need to fight this. I appreciate the offer, Miss Vale, but trying to say... I'm the good guy here. Instantly makes you look bad. I get it. So let me say it for you. The Gazette received this supposed evidence like every other media outlet. And it's all hearsay. Flimsy sources. There isn't a shred of hard proof. Still, allegations like this, they, they don't magically appear. Someone is going after my family. After me. Obviously, the sender didn't identify themselves. We have no idea who it could be. I mean, no one's even done their due diligence on this yet. The press saw the fumble, they grabbed the ball, and ran. Hill wants me out of the picture because with my backing, Harvey wins in a landslide. All signs point to Hill. <sighs> You're a kingmaker, Mr. Wayne. And Harvey Dent is Gotham's knight in shining armor just waiting for the crown. You're the first target on Hill's list. By tonight... This scandal will be broadcast to every screen in Gotham. Everyone will be talking about it. This isn't my first pass through the rumor mill. I know the damage it can do. Then go on the record. Right here, right now, and stop it. You need to get out ahead of this. Your side is what matters, not wild speculation. On the record, then. Whenever you're ready. Pure fiction. This story about my family is exactly that. A story. It's a work of fiction all the way through. That's exactly what the people of Gotham need to hear. You're gonna beat this, Bruce. The Waynes always come out on top. Goodbye, Miss Vale. Maybe I will be on top later. Hey, hey, hey. I hate to admit it, but everyone smells smoke. A fire is heading this way. Batman has made plenty of enemies, but my family... We've done nothing but support Gotham, even in its darkest days. All this 
on the anniversary of your parents, not a coincidence. Harvey's the district attorney. He should have told me this was coming. Then find out why he didn't. And I think we will go ahead and pause this here. Close this chapter out. And next time, we will talk to Harvey and figure out why our buddy the DA didn't tell us that a big, massive firestorm investigation was coming right at us. We will see you next time.